Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's book review, we are going to talk about something that is just so sweet. And it's about an old man who has missed what could have been the perfect love connection. 60 years, six decades has passed. And now complete strangers are trying to help him find that lost connection that he had. Now, we have our characters. Uh, we have Frank, who is the old man. We have Libby Nichols. And we also have Frank's carer. And I believe his name is Dylan. No, I don't take notes. Sorry. So, we find out when, when it comes to Libby, her life is pretty much broken down. Okay. Now, Libby had been living with her partner for maybe seven, eight years. I believe his name was Simon. And one day he just wants a break. Now, Libby had been working for his company and living in his house. They were living together, but he wants a break. So no job, no boyfriend, no home. So what does Libby do? Libby moves in with her family, her sister's family, for the duration, at least until she can figure out what her next step is. But all while trying to figure out her life, she rides the number 88. What is the number 88? It's a bus number. It's a bus number that leads to a character, as we mentioned, his name is Frank. And back in 1962, on bus number 88, he met the girl of his dreams, a girl who even drew a sketch of him while they were on that bus ride. They had plans for a date at a natural gallery art museum back in 1962. Our young girl said, I love art museums. You could spend hours in there. And I think it's, she said there's over 2000 paintings and I remember him saying to her, well, how can anybody do 2,000 paintings in one visit? And she's like, it's impossible. You have to go to successive trips. In fact, you might even find yourself at one painting like I do and gaze at that painting for hours because every time I look at that painting, there's something new that I see. That right there, that right there made me think about art how I used to love it when I was younger and then I just abandoned my love of it. But that's who Frank met. That's who Frank lost. And now Frank has early, not early onset, but he, Frank has dementia, but in early stages of dementia. He's still living on his own. He's got the care of Dylan, but his daughter wants him to go into a home because she's worried for his safety. Frank, all he wants it is mostly all he wants is his independence but he also wants to find that girl that who is obviously an old woman like he's an old man at this point so when he met the girl on the bus she wrote her number on the bus ticket and that's why you look at that cover and it says the lost ticket double decker bus that's where they met so meanwhile as mentioned, we have Libby. Libby meets Frank. And she also meets his carer, Dylan. So what does she do? She agrees or she decides to help Frank find this missing woman. And by so doing, she gets together with Dylan and they go from place to place putting up posters that might bring Frank and his lost connection back together again. All the while, Frank's dementia is increasing and it's happening rather fast. In fact, one day Libby is at the park with Frank, just her and Frank, and I believe they're sitting on a bench if I remember correctly. And he starts staring off into space. Frank, Frank, Frank. And she's not getting any response. She panics, she calls Dylan. He said, just relax, I'll be right there. Where are, you? Where are you? I'll be right there. And so when he gets there, 
we see how Dylan talks Frank out of that fugue state. So Libby knows that Frank's days as an independent, you know, person that is independent and can do whatever they want is pretty much coming to an end. So that ratchets up the expediency of trying to find that missing woman. What an uplifting novel. In fact, there's a lot of drama in this book, okay? I want to talk about the drama for a second. I'm going to say maybe three aspects of things. One is Libby's living with her sister and her brother-in-law and their little boy, Hector. So that's part of the dramatic situation regarding family. Okay, then we have the break that she, the breakup that she had with Simon. And then there's something about Libby that changes her life that will have an impact on her life. And that's a third drama, but I won't tell you what that third drama is. So with all that drama happening in her life, how is she going to help number eight, uh, Frank on this number 88 bus? Well, very, I got very warm feelings. When I pause just now, guess what? I got chills, why? Because I, I'm thinking about how special this is, how precious this was. Frank is 82 years old. He hasn't seen that woman for decades. But the whole story revolves around finding that woman before Frank no longer has the freedom to ride the 88 whenever he so desires. All the while, those family dramatic situations that I mentioned are happening. So the cocoon, you know, this, the, this is Frank's story. And then you have the tendrils on the outside. I'm using the wrong terminology, but you have the things on the outside, the dramatic things on the outside. And then everything starts to intersect, interchange, and become one cohesive, beautifully written story. One that I won't forget for a long time, and one that endeared Frank to my, to my heart, but also one that made me love Libby. I loved her. I can't find a single flaw in Libby that I can tell you about. So that is it. That is The Lost Ticket. This is a Berkeley publication, so you're not going to be able to get this on Kindle Unlimited, but you can get the, it as a Kindle book for $11.98, most likely paperback. It will come up and audiobook, like from Audible or uh what is it audiobook.com script your library check it out the lost ticket by freya sampson thank you for watching bye bye